KB Experiment. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's King Boris from the KB Experiment. We finally, 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 finally have Mr. Hyde, Sherry Reigns on the show. Say what's up. Hey, what's up? And I'll quote CC Pettison, your friend. Finally, it's happened. <laughs> we got the fucking podcast popping. Finally, I'm gonna have to ask your permission so I can air that. Uh, you know, copyright. Uh, right, right, right. I'll get sued. <laughs> I think Listen, you might be all right. Actually, let's let's get rid of Sherry Rain and we'll add CC Pettiston to the next Bonnie and Hyde project. All right? It'll get more stream. It'll get more streams on Spotify. Bonnie sure. and CC. <laughs> I like CC. We like her. We, we'll, oh we'll, yeah, she's the we best. Enter her into our relationship, CC. Hey, where you at? Let's go. That is awesome. Well, finally, you guys are in the studio. I like that little Bonnie and Hyde in the back, and I love the oh, whole background. Well, we do, so instead, instead of babies hanging on our fucking necks at our house and shit, babies know? wake. Well, it's the like baby was marriage. holding the camera at two in the morning. Like, stop moving it. No, right? Yeah. <laughs> so what's up, man? Yeah. So tell me about the yourself. Baby doesn't write. For everyone who doesn't know who Mister well, Hyde is, how, explain yourself. Where you come from? Where you? What do you do? And uh, you know. What is your history? Anybody should there be anybody that doesn't know who the fuck I am by now? I'm, I'm just saying, old, you know, man. Well, we are, we are a little old. Listen, you motherfuckers pay attention. Why do I have to explain myself? What is this, some sort of a fucking podcast? Jesus what? Christ. And like that's all, folks. Thank you very much for coming in. And uh, <laughs> Good, bro, bro. You know, let, let the fans know that you're filming this fucking podcast on opening day of the Yankees. Right now they're playing, and I'm very OCD right now. I want to check my scores. I do not want to do a oh, podcast with shit. you. No, I'm kidding. So now, so That's listen. That's crazy. So Yank basically, Yankees. We the podcast over the Yankees. True motherfucking story. So Mr. <laughs> Hyde is deal. obviously where I come from. I come from, an a, I come from a fucking asylum, as you can see. I'm all over the place. Um, New York, New York. I was born in Elmhurst, Queens. Elmhurst Hospital, the same hospital that Cool G Rap was born uh, I don't want to give it. I don't want to um, let on to our ages, but ten years before I was born, <laughs> Cool G Rap was born in Elmhurst Hospital. So okay. we got that in, in 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 common. And the reason why I say that is because he's my favorite rapper of all time, and he was an influence of me of mine before I even started rapping. So like when I heard like Ill Street Blues and Live and Let Die and all, all, all that crazy shit, mm -hmm. I, I felt like this motherfucker is kicking street shit, multi syllables, telling stories, um, completely rugged, like fucking hooking hooking up linkage and wordplay and lyrics but in like um, a thug context and a street context and and something like from queens something that i could feel before anybody was so that's why i just bring him up so i wanted to pay some homage there uh it also you know it it, it goes along from where with where i'm from from queens new york and basically i've been rapping since like 1992 basically since since Around that time, 91, 92 was when I started, like, we were listening, me and my boy, we were listening to the Stretch and Bobbito show a lot. Yes. Um, let me just put you on. Like, I was in high school when we were listening to that shit, maybe freshman year. Nah, actually, before high school. So this is like junior high school. I would sleep over my friend's house. Sometimes I would, during, the, during school weeks and shit, I would sneak out of my crib on a Thursday night to go sleep by his crib and, and listen to the show so we could listen to it together. And then, on the, like, during the summers, I would just sleep over. It would be no issue. And, um, and we would just, you know, stay up all night listening to the Stretch and Barbito show. And at the end of the show, we would call up and try to rhyme and shit and be terrible. Fucking whack. I'm talking this is like 91. Bro, I remember. Just so you know, I called. Oh, yeah. You remember that because you were already 40 when that was going on. 42. So, um, <laughs> they were digging up your fossils already. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah. So, no, but that's part of I come from that underground New York um, scene, the underground hip hop scene where they were playing the illest shit live on the radio on like um, college radio stations. It, it was it was being aired out of like Riverside Drive Church and like, um, yeah. you know, shows out of NYU. Shout out to DJ Riz and Eclipse and Martin Moore and Mayhem and Wild Man Steve and those type of shows because that's what I came up on. And those type of shows, just so the listeners know, were playing the illest hip hop and sometimes demos and bootlegs before the fucking songs were even yes. out there. So me and someone like Necro or, or, or you know, who came up listening to that show, we would listen to the whole fucking Wu-Tang album and to the 36 Chambers or whatever before it even dropped because Stretch and Bob was playing like a one or two tracks every week before as a build up before the album dropped. You know how people would, yeah. like regular radio plays the single after the album drops, right? Like Hot 97 will play some shit um, after the, the album is popular for a little bit and then they'll drop another single off it. But we were hearing almost the whole album because they would send advanced copies to Stretch and Bob to get to bubble it. Yes. So the listeners would get excited for it. 
And then back in the day, me and you were talking about it, Boris, that back in the day, the tape would drop. It would be a cassette tape. Yeah. You know, we're not as old for, you know, for, for, for a track, but the tapes would drop <laughs> and then we would hear a couple of songs in Stretch and Bob and it would be banging. We'd buy the tape and then we, they have us motherfucking fast forwarding through the whole A side to get to the B side where those fucking singles were. So like we would be very annoyed and I made a promise to myself very early in life, when I, very early in my rap career to never drop a, uh, an album that, was, that had to be fast forwarded through a whole fucking A side. I wanted every track to be non fast forwardable, where every song you could listen to, and motherfuckers didn't have to flip their tape and fast forward and rewind and all that bullshit. And then little do we know now, nobody cares about that. They just add their favorite song on a playlist fucking digitally, and nobody yeah. even rewinds or fast forwards nothing, not even a VHS. You know what I mean? I like to fast forward this fucking podcast so I can watch the Yankee game. It's anyway, it's not it's not that good. I'm watching it right right behind the screen. I'm watching it live, way. but it's not that good. Yeah. So imagine. Anyway, I got <laughs> down with um. I, I started going to these open mics and these underground hip hop um events, and um like New Yorkian Poets Cafe, Wetlands, yes. uh, SOBs, Lyricist Lounge. They would they would hold events and open mics, and all these New York NYC rappers would come out of come out of the woodwork, and I came up with a lot of these fucking people who um uh, ended up having a successful career later on. Dudes like Most Def, Talib Kweli, The Last Emperor, yeah. um, you know, yeah. AL, AL Skills, he goes by all lyrics now, Pumpkinhead, guys like um, Wordsworth and Punchline, obviously Necro, you know, like uh, Nonfiction, all these people. So, you know, Q Unique, The Arsonist, they would all be at these events sometimes. And some of them would, some of them had singles out at the time that were bubbling on Stretch and Bobbito. Some of them didn't. Some of them were like me. They had nothing out, but I just wanted to kick my shit. And I would take the train by myself sometimes because nobody wanted to roll with me to some underground hip hop event. Motherfuckers wanted to go out and, and look for girls and shit or whatever the fuck they wanted to get to fights in the street, my crew. So what we would do is I would go by myself on the train to the Lower East Side, go to New York and Poets Cafe, put my name in a fucking hat. Maybe I wouldn't even rhyme because they wouldn't pick my name out of a hat. And at the end of the night, at the end of the showcase, they would go in the hat and pick out names. And if they said your name, you'd go up there and you'd rap. And you know, a lot of times I got lucky and they said my name and I would rap and people get very, you know, scared and turned off and go home and puke. <laughs> so, um, you know, shit like that. Anyway, that's how I got started in the, in the New York scene. And at one of those events, I actually met Necro in 90, it all ties together. There's a reason, there's a method to my madness why okay. I bring this up because it all ties together. I had heard Necro on the Martin Moore and Mayhem show in 1996. He went up there with his own beats and his own rhymes that he wrote right on the spot. And usually when you're up on a radio show, they would play other people's beats and you'd rhyme on them because that would be the, you know, the hospitality of the show. Right, you'd play right. a Biggie beat or a fucking Wu Tang beat and you'd rhyme on it with your lyrics. He was like, nah, I'm bringing my own beats and I'm going to rhyme on my beats because that's how I wrote the rhyme. I wrote the rhyme to that beat. So he come up there, drop the whole shit. And I'm listening from home in like 1996 right, right now. And I hear this dude go up there and just be like Bogart shit and be like, nah, I'm rhyming on my beats and, 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 and kick his shit. And he rapped completely evil, crazy, foul, um, exploitational, talking about I crash into a fag ball with a stolen Jaguar. You're a gay body kid. I won't have to drag far. Like he was talking crazy shit. And I was like, yo, this dude is rapping kind of like fucked up the way I rap. So like there was, I didn't hear, I didn't know anybody who was rapping like that at that time. Like when I, what I was doing. So I was like, I got to meet this dude. He, uh, and then eventually uh, January, 2000, uh, 1997, January, there was a show. He produced Cage's first single, the dude Cage called Clockwork Orange. And then um, that's a classic underground record. And they did a show at the Eureka Poets Cafe. Cage and Necro were that was there. It was a hey, real show. quick, pa pause real quick. My internet just cut in and out. So hold on, let me just hit record again. Where are you and coming? Oh, you'll be able to piece it together later. Yeah, yeah. So you you uh you were you were talking about uh you were finishing up what Necro was doing uh that show what you were listening to. That's where it comes. Yeah. So I'm gonna the, the, hit what show the 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 the, the radio show. So yeah, he was you know he was doing his own thing even back then, independent wise, like going up to the show and 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 dropping you know freestyles on his own beats. So that really fucking impressed me. I'm like, yo, I gotta meet this dude. Plus he was rapping real fucked up shit that I did that only I thought only I was doing at that time. But obviously I wasn't out yet, so nobody heard heard of me yet in that world. So I was like, yo, and and I didn't have beats, and I know he I knew he did beats for um the uh, at that time the No Tomorrow beat was out the nonfiction No Tomorrow track, and I know he had done the beat for that, and that, that shit was crazy. It was it was mad dark, but the drums were sick, and it was just hooked up, and I liked the track. I was like, oh, this dude does beats, and he and he raps evil. I gotta meet this dude. So anyway, so he had dropped um 
he had done a beat for Cage and a single with Cage called Clockwork Orange. It was a real classic underground track back then. Um, and they, they were going to do a Cage show at New York and Poets Cafe. And I knew ne and Necro had promoted that he was going to be there for the show. So it was like January 2000, I know January 1997. And I just popped up at the show. And basically, uh, after the show, he was actually selling his black and white VHS tape with his beeper number on the back. Like, real fucking do-it-yourself, yeah. independent from the beginning, selling VHS tapes, black and white, that he made at his fucking, his acting college, or his film college that he was going to in Brooklyn. So, like, um, and I was like, yo, I'm going to support. I support the underground. Let me, let me, come here, let me buy one of those. So, when I bought one of those, he, you know, we talked for a little bit. And he was like, yo, he was bugged out because the way I was dressed, I was real metal. I was wearing a fucking leather blazer with a wife beater on underneath in the dead of winter with just a <laughs> wife beater on underneath with metal rings with like fucking uh, the four horsemen of the apocalypse spike rings. You know, those metal rings we get on Canal Street or fucking St. Yeah. Mark's Place or whatever. So I'd have those rings on because I was the type of dude where if you made fun of my leather jacket, I'd punch you in the face with the rings and there'd be flaps of your face hanging off. So I was, I was one of those type of dudes. So he was impressed with the gear. He's like, you're a hip hop dude? What are you doing? And he was like, I was like, well, you know, and I told him I rhymed and I kicked some fucking crazy verse, some out of, out of my mind hide shit. Uh, I was talking about autobionic mechanical sluts, touch you in places, seen by few faces, rape type torture, slaughter oasis, you know, some shit like that. And he was like, yo, this, this dude is a little fucking insane and wacky and he gave me props. And then... I beeper harassed him because I bought the tape, <laughs> the beeper number was on the back. So every day or two, it might have been every day, depending on who you talk to me in that <laughs> I'm harassing him, beeping him. He'd call back, is this hide again? And I'd be like, yeah, man. And I would break his balls. I would talk, so listen, do you do anything else but rap? I don't want to hear you rap anymore. Do you, you know, like, uh, would you would you be down? I'll hang out with you. I don't got time to talk, but you want to you get together and, and drive to the boxing gym? And so I, I was like, he goes, because I've been, I've been sparring at the boxing gym. And I'm like, Really? I'm like, I box, I, you know, I compete, this and that, you know? I, uh, you know, golden gloves, this, that, you know, tournaments. And he's like, nah, you? Really? And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, man, I'll drive to the gym. I'll pick you up right now. So, bro, I think it was the same day. I drove over there, picked him up. We went to the boxing gym. You know what I'm saying? We fucking, we worked out together. We had that in common too. So now he's looking at me like, I got to ride to the boxing gym now. And I'm looking at like, maybe he'll make some beats for me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 And eventually eventually we just became best friends because we had so many things in common and um I, I you know everything was going good and shit shit was about to pop off i was actually supposed to drop my first album with necro um probably like 2002 ish you know like like after gory days dropped i was supposed to drop and then i got locked up i ended up having to do like a six month bid and uh he had put out brutality volume one and that's why i only have one song on brutality volume one a lot of people don't know that story mm. so i was locked up and I only had, I didn't even have a, a, a double ups on some of my shit. Like it, it was recorded and I got locked up literally the, the, before the next time we got in the studio to like finish that track. So his verse wasn't even dropped yet. So he dropped it on, on Street Veteran. He dropped it and it's, I called him uh, in jail and he played the song over the phone and asked me if that was cool. He's like, that's the best thing I could do with it. You like my verses, you know, it's hooked up. So I said, yeah, man, I, I'm extremely grateful. Put, put that shit out. And a lot of other people don't know that wow. Necro laid out the money for my lawyer and came to visit me every VI and put money in my commissary. So Damn. just so you know, um, if anybody disses Necro or bothers Necro in any way and I'm around, <laughs> that's it. it's not, not, not going to be good. It will not be a good thing. That's family right there. Head off. <laughs> just, just, and it's happened. She's seen it happen. She's seen shit. I mean, I've literally knocked out eight people in the span of – 25 you seconds. You can't even look in, at him sideways. Don't, don't. Just don't, don't even do it. And, and vice versa. <laughs> if I'm not paying attention and someone's fucking with me or putting me under pressure, you'll probably get hit from the side, oh. from Necro and laid the fuck out. And that's <laughs> happened before in Scotland and different places. So, oh, yeah. So yeah, you know, yeah. That's my motherfucking brother. So, that's what's up. That's what's up. But that's how it started. Barnard the Naked Dead ended up dropping. I wrote I wrote 75% of my first solo album in jail with no beat, with a beat in my head. That's why the flow doesn't switch up as much as it should. Because uh, it was okay. the same fucking metronome beat that I was creating in a fucking, you know, 8 by 12 fucking jail cell. Yeah. So every time I come out of the, the jail cell, the, 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 the fucking inmates would be like, yo, 8 Mile. Eminem had dropped already. Ah, uh, oh, shit. Me, that was my nickname. Yo, 8 Mile, you dropped something new? You dropped something new, 8 Mile? And I have to kick my fucking verse that I wrote the night before, real rusty and shit. And they would be like, oh, shit, you know. And then we'd cipher and slap box and all that good shit. Born and Naked Dead came out a year later. Um, I got offered a pro boxing contract in between 2003 because as soon as I came out, I started training again. 
and was doing all that. And then I turned down the pro boxing contract to do music because I figured that it's better for my nose in the long run. <laughs> yeah. But I think I, mean, I, I might have chose the right choice. I'm in a nice studio. I have a nice wife. I got a framed picture. Who knows? I might not have had all that stuff as a boxer. Hey, your brain too, <laughs> man. Your, your brain doesn't can't, always work. I definitely can't really box lefty. So, you know, I, I, you know I, I'm not that advanced. Brain damage. Brain damage. I met Kareen and I met Kareen Sherry, aka Sherry Rain, in 2005, and we could let you, you know, ask her about that experience because I, I, I don't, I can't speak French, and that's all she spoke at that time. <laughs> I can't really translate okay. the, the inner feelings of love that she felt when she seen me, you know, more like more no more croissant, croissant. She was looking at me like a croissant. As soon as. He- as soon as she spoke French, Hyde's eyes, he floated to you like this. No, as soon as I saw that she could throw a football with a spiral, that's when I felt Oh, like, shit. Oh, okay. shit. This girl speaks French, which I don't give a fuck about, but she could throw a football. I, I could put her right on uneven yeah. teams, bro. Me and Necro and our hype man or, or our fucking DJ was playing football with us, and Necro was the official quarterback. Now Kareem came. We could play two-on-two. She could spiral that shit right into your gut, you and know, when you go. 100%. And we won. Me and Kareen beat Necro and Carbone. And Carbone. Oh, so Carbone. that's fucking hilarious. And Necro would not let us live it down. He was very upset with that because he's so competitive. <laughs> but, you know. So I shouldn't ask him about it. Sports. Necro was quarterbacking for Carbone, and I was quarterbacking, and Kareem was faster than Carbone. That was the problem. She could run faster. And I'm not afraid to actually dive and catch the ball. Right. I was, my whole elbow. She, she was, was diving motherfuckers. Pitches. I'm not a quarterback. I'm not a quarterback. She was diving for catches that I was throwing, ripping up her knees and elbows, and Carbone wasn't willing to do that for, for Necro. So the Necro's hey. like, you see how Kareen is getting open? You see what's going on here? Listen, those foreign women, man, ain't no joke. Don't take a the fucking beat. evolution is taking place here. Right. The fucking the women in WWE are doper than the men right now. Charlotte Flair could kick the shit out of half the men, and, and Amanda yeah. Nunez in MMA could kick the shit out of half the men. So, yeah, you know, my favorite. And she could make beats better than half the fucking men in the hip hop scene. <laughs> Just so you Yo. know, listen to the Bonnie and Hyde album. All her beats, you fucking jadrools, you jerk offs. <laughs> think you can make beats? Jamokes. This girl made a beat in French. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, Talk to Kareem. Yeah, I, uh, I'm going to go I, in the other room. I literally, wow. He, he's going to go do push ups. He's excited he's, yeah, now. Yeah, he's leaving me. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, tell me about yourself, uh, Sherry. Yeah, I, uh, when I met him, I didn't speak English at all. Actually, he taught me everything. So, you know. Not everything. She used to say, okay, cool. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, you want to go to the that movies? That's the only thing I said. Yeah. Cool. Okay. You want to get some coffee? Okay, cool. Everything was okay, cool. So, because uh, I understood a lot of it, but I didn't know how to speak it. So, I, I pointed at stuff. I spoke in brands, so everybody knows what Bounty or Charmin is. Oh, uh, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Something. Yes. Hey, honey, I just took a shit. I need some bounty. I need some bounty. bounty. <laughs> Fucked okay, it all up. Cool. I'm like, you, sh- you sure? Because toilet toilet paper is better than paper towels for your asshole. Oh, uh, he said, he said, Charmin. Charmin. Oh, that's great. So, um, yeah, I uh, I came from Canada with a bunch of my friends to uh, see uh, the Super Bowl of Hardcore in 2005. It was in March. It was uh, for my 21st birthday. And uh, that's where he was. I, I met him at Super Bowl of Hardcore. I was always a hardcore kid going to hardcore and metal shows, mosh pits. And that's my that's my come up. I always loved that music and the aggression, which I already knew his music because that was really what brought me to cross over to love hip hop was, you know, uh, psychological records and, and the aggression in, in that Hip hop style. That 2004 movement from Psychological and Necro, it where just, all those 2004 albums dropped. Yes. Um, What's wrong with Bill? You know, Subocalypse, Barn of the Naked Dead. See, and, Death. and that's the thing. In in I'm pretty sure in Canada the scene was different, but the underground part of oh, yeah. music is much more worldwide and much more crazy. loyal. Oh, yeah. Crazy. And I um, I, I was never really into hip hop because I um. I, I never grew up around it. Like I grew up in the country where it's hard enough to get any music out there. Like oh, the only okay. thing they play is like French folk and country, and even the radio is only playing French music. And it in was Canada. just for me to find, yeah, for me to find real music. Um, 
Like I just, my uncle was into Metallica and Iron Maiden, Cinderella. He was okay. listening to wow. metal. She and says he, Iron Maiden, Metallica, and Cinderella. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And listen, I, he was into metal. So he was <laughs> all of So it, he was also t- in touch with his feminine side. You're saying yeah. it's, 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 it's Cinderella. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking when we said your it. Now. If your uncle hears this podcast, like, oh man, that was a guilt. Cinderella was a guilt. I hope he doesn't pleasure. speak English, does he? No, he was okay. So he listened to all types of metal, and that kind of put me like, I, I love that. I always loved. He, he would give me like cassette tapes with like Metallica, and I would. Cinderella. I, I would, <laughs> fresh. No, I listened to Slayer, I, Cinderella. Not Cinderella. <laughs> I know what it is. It's hair metal, bro. My yeah. Little Pony. Okay. They, they, have, they tease their hair up in the air. Like, yes, and, and my uncle had hair like that okay. and, and reddish. So now reddish. we know he listened to reddish Warrant. Hair. She's my cherry pie. He was dancing with whitey whiteys. Hey, now listen. Kind of a weirdo. Hey, that was a good song. Right? That was oh, a good so fucking he, song, all right? So he, he put, <laughs> so he put me on to metal. And uh, I, I was uh, I was hanging out with older kids. And uh, <laughs> one of my best friends introduced me to Sick of It All, which opened the whole new spectrum for me of like New York hardcore became like my... See, I didn't even My know that. My favorite I, music. Didn't, I didn't know the one that brought you into that was Stick of It All. I didn't so, know yeah, and I'm a, I'm a huge Madball fan uh, since, Mad I was, since I was in high school. and uh, But Stick of It All opened the way for for all of it. I, I got into Agnostic Front, uh, Madball, Scarhead, Crown of Thorns, Marauder. Marauder. Mm-hmm. I just loved all that and um, just expanded to other bands too like with uh Northside kings hundred demons Scar- death threat Starhead. Well, so stuff. yeah so kind of like hardcore and metal brought me over to the 2004 psychological record movement i, I yeah, one of my yeah. best friend put me on to necro and hyde and bill and uh i loved it shout out d bruiser and yeah put he put on kareen to all our to music. All that music so without oh, okay. that dude putting her on to that she might have just stayed in the hardcore yeah scene we used to always go to shows her. together and hang out so like every day we would hang out and uh go to shows or go out to eat and I, I was studying fine arts at the time and i would just go i would just go to his crib with all my homeworks and uh he would just play music and i would just do my homework uh in his crib and he would play necro and hide and all that yeah. and that just got me into it so when i first met him um it was at a hardcore show funny you enough. were a fan it was at a hardcore show and i didn't want to talk to him because I was, you were a fan I was right thinking, I, I was thinking he's gonna think i'm a groupie i don't want him to treat me like that so <laughs> oh jesus christ edit oh you ruined it making trouble plus i'm <laughs> just fucking, he's gonna crack you with that shit <laughs> Listen, I miss my calling as a comedian. Just my, my boy, Little Vic, always says that. He's like, yeah, Yo, you know you missed your calling, right? You're an okay rapper, but you're a better comedian. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's right. He's all right. I'm all right. Eh. Eh. So, you, so you ran into him, and you're like, I ain't no damn groupie. So what happened? That's right. So, uh, <laughs> That's I ain't no groupie, okay, damn it. Okay, cool. No, but, uh, she tackled you. Yeah, Boom. I, thought, I thought he was handsome, but it, I, I wasn't going to talk to him because I, I just didn't want to. Right, I, didn't want to, I, I didn't want to come across that way. So many months later, we just started writing or mm-hmm. like on MySpace. She didn't want to end up giving a blowjob <laughs> in the bathroom with the Super Bowl of Hardcore. That's what happened. Uh, I mean, I, that, I, I was, I was that, than that. Okay. I'm going to say that kind of ruins the relationship <laughs> for the future. <laughs> yeah, she's classier than that. We would have flushed the bowl first. Go ahead, continue. <laughs> <laughs> and I had my hair was half shaved. Right. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah, and uh, still right. liked me, <laughs> so I guess Downstairs it didn't matter. Who, who moved in for the first kiss? Right. Uh, uh, who moved in for that? I held her hand first. Yeah, oh, it was very <laughs> cute. Oh, <laughs> because I, because Soft I didn't, side. Because I didn't speak it. English. So, so set, the, me... set, set the mood. Set the mood. We're chilling. Cinderella came on. <laughs> he said, "Okay, so he took me to, to, for coffee at Starbucks, right?" 
Oh and, shit! Uh, Fancy. And I, he saw like the girl can't speak any English, so let's go see a movie. I'll right. take you. See, he took me to see King Kong because he figured that I'd understand the the growls. Rah, rah. <laughs> you know that, that's any language. Right? So we went to see King Kong. I was very Kong, thoughtful. I was thoughtful. Right? See, and uh, that's it. He held my hand, and I think he, he in the did middle make, of King Kong. He did make the first move, but then after so that, he grabbed your hand. Was it sweaty? He was like, "Oh my god!" No, he was so <laughs> confident and relaxed. I, I was. I had like. She had 16 <laughs> butterflies flapping around. They almost came out of her throat. Oh, man. That's what's up. I grabbed her hey. hand and felt like a wet fish. Like, what the fuck happened? Why I grab a trout? <laughs> Are you alive? It's kind of clammy. Hold on. <laughs> that's what's up. Hey. I'm but no, sick. Everybody sick. has a story. You know what I mean? And it's, and you guys right, have been together for a while. She's got like fucking flu symptoms. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> fucking early COVID-19. I, I was going to say you had, you had COVID, that. too. Yeah, that's what it was exactly. can we even say hey so um yeah. that that's funny how long but you guys been together for a long ass time that's my point that's why i asked like 2005. so you guys been together for like 26 years 30 years no, almost. No. you know oh, okay like <laughs> years. take it take a zero off yeah take a zero yeah. off. oh my bad <laughs> i get confused i'm so old you know so you guys everything. So 16 years in dog years and uh <laughs> hey but that's not it's not common that we're married that's not a common no, thing you know common. what i mean like people and don't what, stay married anymore and what so. what also is not common is to to make you know music together too which is crazy you know that that's uh to have someone that long be in your life and you get along and then you get along musically because a lot of times people don't the, the, it's going to clash the, the the creative they call it Bands break up because of creative differences. So right. I mean, you know, we could have creative differences. When did you guys start making music together? Like you and her, you and, and uh, um, Sherry. Well, 2012. Uh, yeah. If it bleeds, we can kill it. Dropped. So my my third solo album. Um, and basically, that album I wanted to be more like um, the name of the the name of the album was "If It Bleeds, We Can Kill It." So uh, that okay. was one of the themes where I had a lot of features and a lot of people, like the people that actually were close to me in my life, I had on that album. Like people I grew up with. Sometimes, you know, uh, we even put the the dude who put her in contact with me, Dreb, the guy uh, uh, D Bruiser. He's on the he album, rapped in rapping, French. rapping in French, and she's doing the chorus in and English I sing and in French. In English and French. So it was kind of like the the first time we worked together. It was still. Uh, unsure of right so i was like how about we do a track that? yeah if he's doing the shit if he's doing his verse in french and i'm gonna do my verse in english let's have you do the hook and the piano but the hook is going to be one time said in english and one time said in french ah uh, yes and yes. we just did like a you know and the guy that made the beat for that track was from montreal as well so it was mm -hmm. kind of like that track was it, fit. it, was, a, it was a french canadian <laughs> french canadian <English. laughs> collaboration yeah, yeah. That's dope. I mean, have you have you even to date to this day thought about doing some more French music, French hip hop? Yeah, even I wrote I, I wrote some songs in French, uh, not hip hop, but uh, just regular singer songwriter stuff. Uh, I never actually released a song in French, which is odd because it's my first language. Well, but, let them uh, know that what you're not you're you know you make beats in hip hop and you work with me, but let let them know what your steez is. Yeah, you. actually, um, I was classically trained on the piano when I was uh, very little, like uh, six years old. Mm -hmm. For about three years, my mom put me to take classes because I was already making my own melodies on the piano and. Once uh, my teacher caught me not being able to read the music, and uh, I, I just kind of gave up because I, I didn't have the patience to to learn how to read everything. So um, I just took what I knew and I, I kept practicing and I kept making my own songs. And then I didn't have a piano from uh, when I left my parents' house. I was about 16 years old. I left on my own. And um, when I moved in with Hyde, when I was 22, I told him, like, I, I would love to play the piano again. I miss that. You know, it was always my outlet to kind of let out my uh, my frustrations. And music music has always been a, a massive part of my life, just in general, helping me get through stuff. 
Um, but my first Christmas when I moved in with him, I got home and he had bought me a piano. And oh, he loves you. That was the best <laughs> ring. That's the best ring you could have given me. That's love. That was the, that, instead gave, of, you know how like a ring will cement a relationship for her? Yeah. With piano. That's it. He the gave piano, me the piano. I, he, he had me there. Now, <laughs> now you're it. staying here. Now, now you stay here. Keep him here. Keep Forever. Him here. Hey, it worked out well. Forever. Forever. <laughs> that is <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Jane. And that's that. And that's no. that. And that's that. So have you guys ever toured together? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, actually, yes, and and they're fun. I we did, both smile yeah. because they were great, funny, <laughs> hilarious, crazy tours. Crazy. Because so I, I was, was the merch girl. She was the <laughs> merch girl for for multiple Necro tours. Oh, uh, okay. And sold Mr. Hyde merch and Necro merch and PLR merch and Kid Joe was on those tours with us. All right. Oh, rest in peace. Kid Joe. Yep. Yeah, which Kid he was Joe a, was my he was private the, security. He was the PLR <laughs> mascot, and Necro. Me and Necro took him to different. Uh, uh, costume stores for the whole tour and would buy a different costume for each show. So every show there'd be a flip up and a switch up of Kid Joe's costume. So one day oh, one shit. Kid, he'd be a Teletubby. In, when we did um, in Memphis, he in was Mem Elvis. In Memphis, he was Elvis. <laughs> and called Bowie him, call, called him Schmelvis. Schmelvis. So oh my God. That's bring awesome. Bring him up to the fans bro. that were waiting online with the cam. We have a camera going and be like, meet Schmelvis. You know? And then, and it was crazy. Yeah. Kid Joe was a uh, Kid Joe was wild, man. He was I such a good to... sport, yeah. man. Kid Joe was a good yeah. sport. He was just down to make people laugh. And yeah. then he'd get off his meds and get be mad. dressed in a yeah. in a to in the toilet seat with like the, the paper roll and a piece of shit <laughs> in the toilet. And oh, oh my he'd be smoking dressed him up cigarettes like a... with with like a, a nasty face on, dressed yeah. as a toilet bowl or a, or a teletubby. So if even you worse. can if you can yeah. imagine that Necro grumpy, like, grumpy grumpy kid Joe, a grumpy <laughs> kid Joe smoking a cigarette in a teletubby outfit, and like yeah. You know, like, don't let that teletubby yeah, watch your kids. He, fuck the, yeah. He's hardcore security right there. Like, Let's fuck with the like, teletubby. Look, look, a teletubby. Oh. And the mother would be like, no, don't go over there. That's not a teletubby. It's a it's psycho. A, a toilet tubby. That's what... <laughs> a toilet tubby. Literally. A toilet tubby. Exactly. Holy right, shit, man. Yeah. There's a Kid Joe rest in peace. A Kid Joe forever skit on Bonnie and Hyde on the, on the new album. So um, everybody check for that skit. He's somebody who's just, you know, he was so loyal to the PLR fans and, and the members and just, just uh, no matter what he was going through in life, he had a tough life. He always had a great um, outlook and always, you know, jovial and always fun, always make you laugh, you know, it didn't matter what he was going through. I no still love watching him. Whatever. You could, but, he's, yo, he's on YouTube. He's the best. Necro made him a star. And put him on YouTube. Oh Necro hell yeah, no, no, for real. Like I've watched I'm him for years. Give you the shirt off his back. We were, we're very exploitational. We like to joke, but it's like we, you know, Necro put out a need drugs with 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 Uncle Howie, and you know we got um, family members smoking <laughs> crack in a crack hotel, looking crazy, but yeah. just in order for exploitation and to make the documentary and make the I need drugs theme work with the video and the song and just to make it classic it needed that and necro had that vision to do it and we do that every one of my albums is a theme you know i'll name yeah. something really obscure barn of the naked dead evil never dies if it bleeds we can kill it and it goes along that theme the whole way through and you know that that's a consummate artist someone who can do that i, I feel you know her yeah. uh, one of the her solo album is called the sum of all tears so instead of the sum of all fears the sum of all tears and it's a lot of built up well, you can let them know, you know, built up frustration <laughs> over the years, not yeah. being able to speak English. No, I'm <laughs> yeah, that too. Yeah, that, I mean, uh, right. yeah. Hey, it language barriers bad. matter. I mean, you know, my family's Hispanic, so I'm Colombian. So I know right. a lot about uh, language barriers. Yeah. And trust me, people don't know I'm Hispanic. For years, for years I, I couldn't express myself clearly. And it was such a frustration to... Yeah. Even half people, I, I worked a lot of uh, dive bars and diners and people were so disrespectful telling me like, you stupid bitch, go learn how to speak English before you work in here. Well, I didn't, thing. I didn't hear it. And if she would have came home and oh, forget about it. That, uh, well, I got, yeah, if she was, now I got I'm, getting, fired I'm starting to get chills up my you, spine even hearing that because if I would have known that back then. Well, that's, listen, hi, let me tell you something. It upset me, but I, I couldn't I, let that She dictate. held it in. She didn't talk A about good it. woman does that because... They know that we'll go kill somebody. Well, right. that's the thing. I, I was going through a lot of things. Oh, there was a guy. I, I, I was, was I was so. thinking I cannot 
tell him this because he's gonna be showing up at my job sitting at the end of the bar there was a he was a retired cop or something he thought he was a tough guy at yeah. one, of her, one of her jobs and he was a real douchebag he tried to flirt with all the waitresses this and that he was he was just one of these fucking douches right and he was married right wasn't he yeah, married he was so he was it was married. one of these just fucking scuzzy dudes and she had she had been starting to be able to express herself in english and she let me know about him and i, I kind of got the gist so like I would but go. He would always pick me up and yeah. you know make sure that he because one day she begged me not to attack. Him, I asked. Basically. I asked one of the girl that I was working with asked me to go have a drink with her and I was like yeah sure well, let's go have a drink after work. We go there and all of a sudden this guy is showing up where I'm at with this girl and that's the girl that told him oh yeah we'll be there uh, like come okay. she'll be there. So now you're tricking me to like go a have a drink so that this guy is showing up where I'm at on my own time. Right, and I'm well, like, and I have a boyfriend, bro, you know? Yeah, that's so, how we were boyfriends. So I, I was just I was like, no, like this cannot <laughs> be. And I told him, like, the guy makes me uncomfortable. At that time, we were boyfriend and girlfriend. And it was like, you know, it was, it was still so, new and all. But I was down to, you know, protect her what the fuck I got to do. So I, you know, I... I, I well, so I went over there. From then on, I picked up. Just pick me up so every day. I'd be strapped with weapons to the teeth. Let's just let's just <laughs> keep it real right now, right now, right? I'd be having it'd be the middle of winter, and I have all sorts of fucking weapons on me. Not gonna say what kind, but I would go pick her up and like glaring, you know, into the window. Oh yeah. Like, you know, are you off your shift yet? And you know, you know, like looking in there like that. Just through know, the window. Yo, um, Kareem's boyfriend is here right now. Um, <laughs> is she done they yet? Thought, they thought he was. Is nuts she fucking anyway. done yet? Well. You know, like, like that type of shit. That's and what you gotta do. I was waiting for someone to be like, "Yeah, yo, who are you?" You know, like, like uh, oh, you. Was like, yes, this is allow that. Allow me to show you. Let me, let me. Allow, allow me, me to introduce you. myself. Hello, my yeah. name is Hyde. And allow, <laughs> my name is like Hyde. A, a Austin Powers. Allow myself to introduce myself. <laughs> you, you don't want that. Fucking jerk off. Hey, but you know what? That's again, that's a good woman because a good woman will keep that shit and tell you. Later on a podcast live in front of everyone, right? And, but, and, and, and get me ready to rip things off the walls, like. I'm but ready that to you know what? How many times? Like, oh my I'm like, god! I'm thinking in my head: Is the guy still work there? <laughs> yeah. Hey, it, it's uh, that's how that's how my wife. I've been married 15 years. We're being together. I've known my wife since high school, and there's shit she still tells me like today, and I'm like. God damn it! Why don't you say something then? Because you would have done something. I was that's like, it. I know, that's and it. she's like, like, exactly. I'm we like, we gotta pick our battles, you know. Like, do I want a husband in jail or do I want a husband at home? Right. Or, <laughs> Especially or, now or that I have a little to... baby, I gotta, I gotta. It, it is true. My... Does she want to spend my... all her tips for the last three weeks bailing me out? Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. I don't yeah. got anything I can sell. I can <laughs> sell some be... Charmin. <laughs> the, hey, it's the truth, though, man. And like, I, I think maybe that's now a, we sell, you know, like now that that we're all, you know, we're, we're super famous. Hey, look, that's <laughs> that's a big thing. All I'm saying is, uh, you know, as 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 hardcore that one could be and all that shit, a good woman does what she did. Because I'm telling you, and yeah. I know you, it, it could have ruined I somebody's keep life. Out of dry. Oh, well, there was I mean? time. There was times. <laughs> listen, there was times where she was at hardcore shows and things happened, and I'm calling up my friends like. Don't like, let me go there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you handle it, because or, or yeah, and and it's not in. even. I, I'm telling him something casually, right and he d doesn't think that it's okay, and he's ready to hell yeah you know, come there with. Bro, action. that's that's yeah. what it is. So, Fuck it, just go there with. No, see you know. what 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 people don't realize. All I have to do is visualize it. If it's if it gets visual in my head, it, it'll happen. That's so it. all I have to do is replay it once in my head. That looks like like it might be cool. Like the, that blood <laughs> squirted across the wall and a hatchet in someone's skull. Oh my god! That, you, that you can meet, be done. You run into the guy. You know I killed you like twice, right? What? You don't even know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah, don't even twice. fucking know. Three times already. <laughs> already. <laughs> on the, oh on the way my here. god! So the fourth time is gonna be really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know how like serial killer, ser Ice no, Man. Hey. Kuklinski will tell you the first time is always the hardest. So I'm already yeah. on the fourth or fifth time, but I got time to get to you. Listen, <laughs> this like, is fun now. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna kill you, and then I'm gonna fucking you know eat a cheeseburger. Hey, so let me ask you this: when when, uh, when were you on tour when uh, Necro got kicked out of uh, was it Europe? Of course, I was on right. tour with them every did, tour. Did you get kicked out as well? Yes. Or, okay. And, and I'm that's what the I wanted one to ask. Calling Europe, I'm the one calling Australia, finding out where they are, which precinct, trying to oh, find you somebody that speaks there. English. Oh, my God. We were I got in Switzerland we to got find somebody up. that could yeah. speak English to me was uh it, it ended up being 
the secretary of something that knew a little bit of English that was able to tell me where they were and at what time their co court date was. And that, oh my God, it was just. Yeah. Uh, hide. Lots uh, of fun. Uh, far fig Nugan. Uh, <laughs> hide eats fig Newtons. Um, I don't know what to, I don't know what to do here. <laughs> Damn, okay. I was just like, I was, even asking them, I was like, do you speak French? You know, usually in Switzerland, a lot of people speak no, French. No, they speak a little Some Italian people too. people speak English. Uh, Nobody okay. in that precinct spoke English or French. And until... So, it was, so you as well are ban were banned from Europe. Yep. And uh, that, that was lifted already, I'm pretty sure. I think... It's been lifted. Yeah. Okay. All, and, and it was so easy. All, all we had to do was apologize. Necro just had to apologize to the... The Swiss consulate or somebody whoever's running yeah. the Swiss yeah. government. Over yeah, there. another story. I just wasn't sure if if she was there with you and and how she wasn't on the tour. She was home. Yeah, I was home. And yeah. also, that's funny. When they got arrested in Australia, my friend from Quebec, the guy De Bruiser, that same was uh, the same guy. My friend that put me on to the music and stuff calls me and asks me. Hey yo, what's going on? And I'm like, uh, what's going on? He goes, Well, hi, the necro got arrested in Australia. I'm like, they what? <laughs> like, yeah. I didn't know he anything was about it. it. Like, he had his ear he was concrete. on the message board. Somebody Damn. said something. Damn, the message the boards. Photo. That's right. Holy it took shit. me, it took me a whole day to get yes. to Australia. Bro. And, uh, so yeah, yeah. But they Those... were they were very nice though. They even let him know that okay, your wife called from America. Yeah, yo, it's shit. on it. Those cool. message boards are no joke back then, bro. That, that no, was life. You get the news boards, you just get that the was news fucking life the right end. there. Hell yeah. It was like the Yankee score so, coming uh, across the bottom of the screen and shit. Like, and oh. thank God he called me thinking I knew more than I did because then yeah. I was able to find out how to get through to Australia, find, find where they were. I, I had to find out if I, if I had to send bail money, if I had to fly out there to get them out. You know, I, I didn't know what was going on and right. what it was going to cost that us, and well, it, it, how long it was going to be in there. I mean, listen, this shit happens. You know, a so, lot of people, they just did that shit to uh, a couple of, you know, like famous commercial artists got locked up abroad. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. And I forget, I forget who it was. It was uh, one of the ASAP Rockies, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly, Rocky. You got and they 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 did it to him. They were on some fucking. It was almost like it was set up. Yeah, they, they were heckling him, and they wanted him to you know get take some kind of offense, so then they could lock him up for assault. And you know, it was crazy. It looked like it was playing. I watched it. Yeah, no, I see. I looked into all that. And oh uh, so, yeah, I mean, you know, any well, anything that goes viral, you're gonna be up. Well, on. now, yeah. See, this is the type of shit that went viral mainstream back then. Back then, no. it was all forums. I remember right. that. Right. You and, couldn't really yeah. get. But the same thing with underground hip hop too. It was funny because um, you couldn't get it unless you had like Napster, like or or if you were listening Correct. to Stretch and Bobito. And if you didn't live in New York or the tri-state area over there, you're not going to listen to Stretch and Bobito. So you, you might get a lot of that shit late. Or, well, we used to we used to share that. So I'm I'm a big graffiti head, right? So yeah. I did a. I mean, I was hanging off of trains and highway signs like crazy shit. Crazy. But I remember uh, uh, there was a uh, website called Art Crimes, and I believe uh -huh. they had a forum as well. So that's where we would share the underground music. I believe that's where I found Necro, mm -hmm. okay. and was in one of those forums because I, I was like 15. I actually used to skate like a, a, a you know fucking inline skating or whatever, mm -hmm. jumping off of shit, and um, I used to make these tapes. And you know, blank tapes and bootleg them just for myself and my friends. But um, yeah. when uh, I know, I know, I have some friends in the skating culture that were in New York, NYC skating culture. And yeah, we so you know how big it is. All that. Yeah, graffiti, skating, all that shit. So we had all those forums, and I remember when uh, that shit happened in Europe. You know, people knew about it because of the forums. So it's it was like it went viral in the forums. It's like oh shit! But you know what? The internet was so different, bro, than it was today than it is today. But when you said forums, that brought back so much shit because I'm like, yo. And back the then, it wasn't censored right. like Hell it is no. today. It's like Hell as soon no. as they as soon as something pops up, it just it's just one word that they'll take the whole thing down. You know? It's, oh yeah, yeah. everything Can is cancel policed. culture. Get the fuck out, bro. Oh yeah. my god, bro, get the. It fuck was out. so raw back you then. The be, shit that was out there. Yourself. But Listen, anymore, you know? no, hundred percent. Necro you and Mr. Hyde, we wouldn't exist if, if, if it was no. cancel culture like that, as it is now. Facebook's even Spotify. I mean, you know, yeah. we did the Joe Rogan. So oh. like, 
so much shit. I mean, y'all look, if you guys don't know, look look into that shit. <laughs> but, like, the censorship is so fucked up right now. They're trying to cancel Mr. Potato Head. Come on, man. That's you ridiculous, yeah. Child, what's next? Twister? They, no, they canceled like, Pepe you know, Le Pew. Pepe Le Pew. Well, every, that's like, your homie. Said, that's the yeah. French homie. That, so what's she's that mad. Pepe Le Pew. Because he, he liked on the on the, the female a little too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Me man, too man. culture. He was raping them, you know? Like, he was, Jesus uh, Christ. He was well, forcing it, them it, to smell his perfume. It, imagine. <laughs> so this is, it, it is different, man. Like back then to now. And Way different. I mean, you, everybody's so up in arms, politically correct. Listen, I'm on some fuck that shit, man. I'm on some fucking be yourself. Yo, be yeah. yourself. So for the same thing, if you're an artist that's raw and raunchy and you're being you and you're fucking, you want to write what you want to write, freedom of speech type shit, then how different is that from some fucking person <laughs> trying to be themselves, transgender or whatever the hell they want to do with their lives. They want to put a dick on their forehead, whatever the fuck whatever. they want to do, rearrange their body parts. Do what you got to do and be, be yourself. Let them be. be you. But let us be too, man. What are you exactly. going to cancel us for? You don't cancel them with a dick on their head, but you're going to cancel me for saying it? Exactly. I'm Honestly, with it. Get, get all the way the fuck out of here. And that's the truth. You <laughs> don't use your rights to stomp on my rights. You, it, it's not like... Uh, well, that's right. it. Everybody should it's do like reverse do racism. whatever they want. It's all this you reverse know? racism, reverse censorship, reverse, reverse censorship. Get the fuck all the way the fuck out. See, we got to... <laughs> Some of us got to be smart enough to use it against them, and then they oh, can't yeah, say yeah. shit. It's I, coming. But she knows how I am. It's I, coming. I'm gonna. I'm a. I'm on some stubborn. I, I'm gonna do my thing no matter what the fuck anybody does. No matter what is happening in the world. Another thing was we were in Europe, right? When the fucking France and Paris bombings happened, when the terrorism happened a couple of yes. years back. So we were actually one. And I country. was on my way there. Oh yeah, she was on her but... way to come see the show in Paris. She bought plane tickets to come see that show because she started mm -hmm. off at home. Because I think we did it on our anniversary. Was it? Was uh, yeah, it? it was on our anniversary. I was meeting him in Paris, right? And to watch that uh, show. My hotel was two blocks from the bombings, oh, so okay. my hotel was canceled. Then I just then he started getting nervous because he had to. I was gonna stay in Paris by myself and catch another plane, but he was going to like Switzerland or something like the very next day. So he didn't want me staying all by myself in Paris with everything that was going on in the climate. It was a little crazy. So well, I we didn't up... cancel us. What we did was we canceled the Paris show and we moved on. We were supposed to do the Paris show the next day and after the bomb. And you guys did it. We ended up doing the Paris on. show in a different venue at the end of the tour, and it's still fucking almost sold out. Still crazy. On a and boat. You, you guys recorded tour. that, right? There's a lot of videos of you on tour, on that specific tour, because I probably, remember watching yeah, probably, yeah. you guys stuffing in a van, or I forget, driving across fucking Europe. <laughs> Word up. Word up. And then, yeah. then uh, no, yep. and then we also did like, plane flights it was a lot of plane flights that tour too yeah so but i remember that um we didn't cancel and we, uh, but the point i was trying to make is we're on some fuck that shit if, yeah. the, if we didn't do the show and we all flew home and we just stopped the tour and then the terrorists win right because what they want is to inflict fear and make everybody stop doing what they're doing and they can't live everyday life Correct. so if we go home the terrorists win fuck that shit we're on some okay. i'm on some fuck that shit no we're, that's we're, hey we're, listen you ain't stopping that, me that's what made you guys today what you are you know, so why change like now? That, and that's why you we can't relate. live we relate. your life in fear, you know what I mean? Bro, I started... And I, I didn't want to make him worry the whole time he was going to be on tour. So I'm like, listen, do you, do your right. show, I'll cancel, I'll see you when you get home. You know, it's not like our, it's going to be our last anniversary. Right, it was right, a, right, right. It was a downer, like I was looking for forward. For her safety, fine. You know but, I mean? like, let's, not, let's not push it. You know, I, I was coming regardless. <laughs> but she, he was like, was listen, to I'm going to be but, nervous the whole time you're there. I don't know, like yeah. I, I got to be somewhere else and you're going to just be all by yourself in Paris. Right, for me and my he brand, like, it's no. one thing. But when, <laughs> when, other, when people I love, it's just you're pushing it a little too much. Right. And I'm like, let's not take extra chances. We're going to finish the tour. Don't get me wrong. We're going to do our thing. But let's not go out of our way to fu to tempt fate. You know what I mean? Like, correct, like, correct. Like, don't come here on top of everything on that's top, happening. Right. So, so, I mean, you know, you got to – It is what it is. Battles. Yeah. Of course. Of course. No, but And that's right. I mean, don't don't change for no one. And Fuck I'm not that. trying they... to stress them out. You know, I'm coming there for, for us to have a good time. If, right. if we're not going to no, have there's, a good time – Listen, I'm not saying home. that if someone kidnapped her and is a, is a, a, a you know, a hundred – people army you know guarding her i'm not just gonna go in on some fuck that shit and get killed on my way in yes we are what are you talking about of attack no so that's about strategy too and about being smart you're gonna walk right in there and be like yo man you guys but 
just by walking in there, they're going to be like, wait, 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 wait. It's good, but it's going to be apocalypse now, extraction mission. And <laughs> it's going to happen. So taken. you got to bring that. Yeah, listen, the helicopter. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you see the movie Taken? It's yeah. worse. Bro. I, was I was just about to say that. Up. I can see him <laughs> but, on the phone like, no I idea. have a special <laughs> set of skills and rings bro, and I weapons. Would, Liam like, Neeson is <laughs> fucking minor leagues, bro. <laughs> Let me yeah. tell you something. With me and my goons that I'll bring, forget about it. You guys, you just can forget about it. Hey, you, you ever seen <laughs> a skit, the Italian president? The what? The Italian president. What about him? You ever seen the skit? There's a comedy skit, and it's dude. Oh no, no, no. Yeah, you got to watch it because what you just I, said, literally bringing yeah. the goons. He said, "Yo, if an Italian was president, the yeah. war would be over." He went to uh, <laughs> Afghanistan, <laughs> and he went into well, a cave, and he goes, "Yo, Ben, how you doing? Pull up a rock. I gotta, I gotta talk to you for you a doing? minute." That's yeah. how he did. He goes, "You know how long it took me to get here?" So he's like, "Hey, Vinny, hit him with the bat." Hit him with the bat. He goes, is he dead? Good. Grab the carpet. Let's go. And then, uh, bro, this Roll shit him up is so... The carpet. You don't even need the carpet. You can use his turban. It, well, listen, goes... so what I was going to say is um, my father, now that you bring that up, is, you know, he's 100% Italian from Brooklyn and, you know, like a knock around guy type dude. Yeah, you know? yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. Gonna go, I'm not going to go into anything. But but uh, he, one of his famous phrases was, you just don't own bats. So this is, a, I want to name a song that at some point in my, my, my career, but people used to call him when there was a problem, right? And, and all the time, because Uncle Eugene would come or Eugene would come and the problem would disappear. Something would happen. Right, to right. You might all, he might not have to get violent. He might have just had to talk to somebody and it'd be over. It's, it's about the, never it's about the vernacular, him. especially from the Italian the respect, uncle. Right? So, so I remember my, my, my cousin Malachi, his mom, right, would, would always call my father if there was a problem. Oh, the guy next door is bothering me or he said something to me or, you know, he, slapped, he smacked my ass, anything, like something like yeah. that. Something small but, like, not so small. So my father would come and settle it, tell, put somebody in line, give somebody a beating, whatever it would be, right? And then eventually he'd get, like, he was busy. He was playing poker. He was running numbers. He was doing whatever the fuck he was doing. And he'd come there. And the guy wasn't anywhere to be found. He was Uncle Eugene. The guy was, you know, bothering us. He was here. Now he left. I don't know where he is. So he get annoyed, and we go, "Listen, you just don't own bats." And they're like, "What? <laughs> yeah. Bats? You just don't own bats? You take the bat, you hit him on the head, and then you got no problem. The problem's over. Get bats. Buy a bat. He's hey, that, and that's He's a fact. Still like that. He's still like that. He's that's ninety. Got Italian God, shit. God, you know, God bless yeah. him. He's ninety, and and I think <laughs> at eighty, still, around eighty years old, he beat up the guy at, like beat he beat up the that. supermarket <laughs> guy. The guy was the guy disrespected him. The, the guy bagging groceries disrespected him somehow. He said something to him, and he and knocked him out. And he knocked the guy out. Eighties. No, like, like, Listen, like 80, yeah. eighty-one. He hit the you guy. Don't fuck with old Italian guys. His father is. You don't yeah. fuck with old Italian guys. Honey. That's it. And, and here's the sickest thing. The sickest thing about it is his old wife. He's got his old wife with him. You know, like his, he remarried with another. And and they don't even get excited when he does some crazy shit like They're that. Like, oh, you okay, don't get well. excited so when I do some crazy it. shit. Well, She's like, same. come on, Eugene. We got to go. <laughs> <laughs> hurry up, <laughs> hurry up and knock him out. We got to go. <laughs> let's go. Let's go before they call the cops again. I got the meatballs on the stove. We got to go. <laughs> Right. Literally. Oh, man. Like, oh. That is hilarious, bro. Sometimes hey. my friends will be like, um, if shit happens, I'm already warming up the car. You know, so I, I hung out with oh, a lot I, of friends that were Italian. I got you. The car will be running. She'll, she won't even beat yep. the horn loud. She'll just tap the horn like, boop, boop. <laughs> you already know. <laughs> Come on, do this motion. Come, come on, come on. Well, that. that Let's get out of here. Hey, come on. Let's Doesn't go. even have to be our car. I, I drive stick and everything. <laughs> this shit is hilarious, bro. And, hey, and, you know. And, and segueing into Bonnie and Hyde Epic Pursuit. So the first, we just dropped the video for it. Go check it out on YouTube on my channel. But um, okay. Epic Pursuit video is uh, an interploration and we we re recreated the theme of the original Bonnie and Clyde. Shout out uh, to P Flowmatics. He hooked up the video with the old school vibe and um, it's, it's pretty fucking crazy. Um, and and uh, it's all that black and white old school Bonnie and Clyde uh, car chase. We took exactly their story and personified it in a hip hop track with her singing the hooks and going back and forth with me on the rhymes and it's crazy. Check out Epic Pursuit, y'all. It's and actually relating to us and, 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 our, and right. our our relationship as well. You right. know that so I reset the Bonnie and Hyde scene, Bonnie and Clyde scene with Bonnie and Hyde 
as rappers yeah. and singers and playing all the right original piano and the shit is dope it. i saw it. it it'll be in the description so everybody be able right. to go right couples goals like that that shit that they hashtag yeah couples goals like that type of thing. ride <laughs> or die chick hell that's yeah but I, i'll put all that stuff in the description so everybody could check it out but that's definitely oh, uh oh. I mean, everything that you've ever put out is dope, you know, and all the music that you guys have put out. I appreciate that. Listen, I'm extremely appreciative for for the fans and anybody who listens because I know that my shit in general, I think her shit is much easier to digest than my shit. And and she's she's only t- uh, scratching the the tip of the iceberg with what she her potential. I no, and that's, she, I see that you're talented as fuck. Like, I mean, she, when I hear her music cool and what she piano, does. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. It took me so many years to even get comfortable enough in my own skin to to embrace my my creativity and and feel worthy of being on his shit because I know how tedious he is and I, I never felt quite worthy. Yet. Well, there's you a know reason what I mean? why it's we, just we, it took me a long time to feel like, OK, I can do this and I'll feel confident about what I'm doing. I always felt like it's it was falling short of being as dope as what he does and, Mm -hmm. you know, kind of growing as an artist around Hyde and Necro and, you know, Bill and and people, you know, in their realm. To me, yeah, yeah, it was, it's just like, it's a different type of aura when you're around them than if you're around this other artists, you know, they're so particular about their craft and everything that I never wanted to be criticized for for bringing that like you weren't worthy the, bring like i wasn't yeah bringing right. down the value of the music you know what i mean i wanted to be viewed like oh Listen, wow no, I wife, and, like and she brought i she love brought her i love her, I love her with all my table. heart i love her with all my heart but i would never let her water down my brand so if the shit wasn't on a level the shit would not be released and there's a reason why right. we're together almost 16 years and this is the first album we did together because maybe she wasn't ready in certain areas she's always been an incredible um emotional but I wasn't uh, ready. Uh, keyboard player and piano player, but to translate that into hip hop and you know, all everything, the whole brand thing and to be able to vibe with me on that level is a reason. And also for years I was doing uh, metal with, with mm-hmm. a couple of my girlfriends and you know, I, I was just doing more um, experimental alternative metal and Uh, I was trying to do my own thing with the piano. So I wasn't really trying to infiltrate his brand. You know, I want, he was doing his thing and I I, I wasn't trying to be like all about what he's doing. You know, I wanted to do me and learn and, you know, get some experience with working with other artists, you know, that weren't my husband. And, you know, so I kind of, I did a lot of growing up on my own, you know, before I was comfortable to, Mm -hmm. to, um, to do to some stuff like that. I remember I, I started playing some pianos that Hyde was like, oh shit, I could rap on that. Like, that's dope. And I was like, you know what? Let me try to make some beats. And I can see it. that. I can see that you evolving. And as that, as that happens, Hyde, like, like I could see how the music comes together now and how much, how it vibes. Right. So I could definitely see how maybe 10 years ago it may have not worked, but right now the shit you're putting out, yo, know, it's, it's like, meant to be you know what i'm saying i appreciate it, it you know because I, I won't do anything even even down to the nitty-gritty of my creative process she knows i will not even fucking pick up a pen or headphones or anything if i'm not inspired at the moment yeah. because sure. if i force something it's not going to sound as dope as if i'm inspired if i'm my juices are flowing and i'm ready to rock and it's like you know you wake me up out of nowhere and like yo right around you know like it, it's not gonna no. come out as good as, no. as if i if i'm if i motivated just finished, and yeah know. plus he's got his whole routine like he's gotta have his coffee <laughs> he's gonna, i'm a coffee snob. <laughs> he's a coffee snob if it ain't bustello he doesn't want it nah bustello <laughs> bustello <laughs> we the most the, we could colombiano be, yeah, there you go. hey i just had some bustello i swear to god this morning <laughs> Yeah, there you go. So, but yeah, shout out but to Bustello. He has, he has his own lab. I'm still trying to get sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> she even wears the yellow Bustello shirt. Yeah. Where's the yellow Bustello? Like, hey, hey. sponsored. Free co- just give me free coffee. You ain't got to pay me. Just pay. Yeah, that's it. Just give me coffee, a lifetime supply of coffee. And- Bro, I eat that shit right out of the can, man. What are you talking that's about? It. Uh, that's it. I just said I'll, 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 I'll make a film <laughs> called Bustello. If you, if you cut my wrist, coffee grinds will come out. <laughs> hey, we're out of coffee. Hold on. <laughs> 
Everybody right, thinks about coke or something. I just, I've never done a drug Please. in my life. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I'm just on pure fuel, life adrenaline, and probably a touch of madness and and coffee. Maniac. He's a maniac. Well, I'll I'm put not, you. I'm hey, I'm you're you're a healthy dude. But, so you know, that that contributes to it. You start yeah, losing okay. energy if you don't stay healthy. Oh yeah, health he's as well. got he's got so much energy. That's why our uh, our baby Angelina is so oh, energetic. She's, she's a, it's a she is the incredible. Tasmanian devil. She's yeah. got too much energy, just she's like too, him. She's cute, bro. She's so funny. She's cute. I've seen crazy. her so many times. I don't like daddy. She's been on the, <laughs> she's been on the podcast he, many he times. He crawls after her and growls, and she growls back. You know, it, we, it, that's hilarious. The beast man like, cometh to play with your kids. <laughs> there you go. The <laughs> boogeyman's going to be scared of her. Yeah. He's going to come out and be like. <laughs> she took her to work. Listen, she took her to like, take your kid to work day. And and the, she was running around the workplace growling, and the, the people somebody were like, was like, "What is she doing?" I was like, "Oh, she's growling." She's growling at you people. Know, no big deal. That's okay. Hey, she's growling at people. That's how shit works. My daughter's seven, and she she loves <laughs> watching scary shit. Here. So it, you know that tells you a lot about you know how strong they are. Like my you know she's she ain't gonna be a, a no punk pretty much. Right. She's mm-hmm. gonna stand up for her friends and herself, like period. Oh yeah, this, you know she's gonna funny? be a little terror just mm-hmm. like us. What people don't know from the podcast, <laughs> Boris is my friend, and I, I be calling him for fucking children advice because he's got three yeah. of them, and they were all <laughs> wild also. So you know, so I, I, and I'm really supremely trying not to lose this luscious head of hair like he did. Oh Jesus! Yeah. Don't even. Luscious, <laughs> luscious. Yeah. I'm getting a little thin already. <laughs> every every time I had a child, like the it's hair would fall off the in the delivery room. Once that kid was born, and then you got a little thinner and thinner. Yo, that's I swear to God, like that shit starts to happen. You're like, what happened? It's, it was just there. Like, oh fuck, the baby's. That's yeah. where the we're talking about. <laughs> she just brought up a, a horror movie reference. She said, "Sir." Dinner. Oh yeah! <laughs> Holy good. shit! Dinner. I did that shit on my head. That yeah, yeah. Fuck that. And that's what somebody did, right? It was a gypsy curse. They got you yeah. The head, oh yeah. No, no, it was on the face, but they did my head by mistake. I moved. It. <laughs> I was like, ah, right. shit! They got my head. There's one patch of beard that you can't grow because that's what the gypsy touched. Yeah. <laughs> Dinner. And all of a sudden, like fuck, that's great. I actually did that to someone, an unsuspecting passenger on the train as a teenager. <laughs> I went up to him while he was sitting down on the train, New York City train line, ran up to him and went, sir, on his face. And he went, oh, oh, God, oh, God. And I was Yo. laughing so loud that I was laughing so hard I jumped <laughs> off the train. It wasn't my exit. I jumped off the next train and ran, you know, like, and then got back to the in train. Harlow, like, like, oh, and, shit. Yo, yeah, how long ago did that me? movie come out? A long time. Yeah, I'm, I might need to go time. watch it again, bro. That was such a. It's early nineties. It was a good one. Such a so, dope but Manhattan corny Island. movie. Corny but great. Yes, corny, it's like but, a classic. The acting is actually good. It's yes. comedy. Yeah, yeah. You know, but a the lot white of my man style from is town. Horror, but, right, the white man from town. So a lot of my style is horror, but it's also tongue in cheek comedy. You know how like a horror movie would be so brutal, but yeah. there'll be some character in the movie that's. You know, some chop top dude who's crazy and fucking, you know, yeah, with yeah, yeah. Head, picking it with a hanger and eating it, you know, like some, Ooh, some crazy nice. So that sums up my style. You'll get the horror brutal and then there'll be some touch of comedy in their comic relief and you'd be like, oh shit, that shit's nuts. Or the video might have some comedy in it. If you watch um, Verses from an Unquiet Grave, it's got Kid Joe in it with burying Kid Joe alive and he's, yeah. you know, <laughs> That's it's, so it's, it's, it's a crazy shit. And, he's, and at the end, he comes back from the grave, It's which I wish he would do now. But um, yeah. you know, it's just it, it will add like comic relief everywhere. And that is hilarious easy, that easy, you brought easy, that up. Yeah, that yeah. touch. It can't be just brutal, brutal, brutal all the time. People get turned off, you know, or they'll only listen to you when they're looking for beef or working out in the gym trying to bench eight hundred pounds. And I yeah. even let him abuse me in unspeakable. Yeah, and in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect. That was perfect. That's how the baby was born. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I, I would. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so. Uh, so what are you doing later? You want to let you want to let grandma keep the baby a little longer? <laughs> hey, you do need a second one. I just gotta we'll say, the Tasmanian Devil Part Two. I, I'm a big fan of having at least. You're not a real parent if you have only one kid. I'm just letting you right. know. Well, now. We have two cats, so does that count? Oh yeah, there you go. Right, there you go. But uh, yeah, you need. I'll I'll give you one of mine. To be honest, uh, yeah, you have. I don't care. They're already I'm, grown. I'll take the kid. 
the, right. the, we have we also have six nieces and one nephew. If you send me one of your kids, immediately that kid will be transformed into a babysitter. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be making the music. The kid will be watching Angelina. Hey, you might send you might send my daughter back because she's a piece of work. If I had my last one first, she'd be my only kid. Uh, that's question. exactly what his brother said that if the last one came first yeah. they only would have one and not seven the last <laughs> shall be first I actually on the way to the bad studio as hell. i was writing a rhyme and i wrote the, the first line last so like the, the intro line whatever the intro line of the song was it was the last line i wrote so it happens to me all the time because i'm like this rhyme is good but it needs a good beginning to catch everybody so i have to write something extravagant for the beginning and you know that, that, so i write the, the first line last when are you gonna put the uh, baby in the album? Um, never. No, no, never? I, no, no. When she starts talking and saying words that are cute, I might teach her to say something fucked up, and then they'll. <laughs> 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 hey, listen. Just gonna that's... go to school like saying that. Well, listen, I'll, I'll just, blame I'll, it on her uncles. Right, right. That would. Uh, be, it was because micro taught her. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't. Godfather it's, you know. is so such a bad influence. <laughs> yeah, look, look. My son would walk yeah, around. Blame it on the Godfather. And, and, and the Hell yeah. He's not because Necro is brutal as can be, dope fucking. You know everything he about that. He's very but, sweet with but, kids. But if it's her birthday, he'll buy her so many fucking gifts where we, we don't have any room for them. So like but he's dude, just he's, he's got a soft stop. spot. That's for a lot. Kids. And that's why we made him the Godfather. You know. Yeah. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Yeah, Necro. We got the Godfather's uh, album. Cool G rap and Necro. Speaking of Godfathers, hell yeah, yeah. Um, damn, that's crazy, man. Um, the whole thing with the you—you you would think um, when I met Necro, same thing. Like I thought he was his music, right? Not that he isn't, but that dude's a fucking genius. Yeah, like no lie. Like once, like I've listened to you guys for twenty years, but once I started like talking to you guys on a personal level. I didn't realize how fucking smart you guys were. You guys are, not and it's the so truth. Some fucking Neanderthals running around with weapons. I mean, <laughs> if, if you look at imagery, right? What do you think? I think they're highly underrated. You know, no, for real. Like game, the level, I, I feel like they're so beyond most of what's really popping today. I, I just, but that's what's good with underground now is you can manage your own brand like never before. You can and control still, all and your shit. Do well all on your own. Hell yeah. What do we do? What do I do all day? I mean, I'm sure the fans get sick of it. Add me on Spotify. Add me on Apple Music. Do this because it's become. I, I'm. I get neurotic because it's not a tour. It's not even a touring world anymore. It's a digital. They'll stream the fucking show. A live stream from the from the yeah. tour. People are doing live shows in their fucking house. So yeah. it's like everything is so digital that I'm 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 OCD when it comes to it now. Please follow me on Spotify because if you don't, there will be no more Mr. Hyde. If there's no more, if there's no more yeah. digital and you're not following me and my fans with 35, 40 maybe at this point are not making the jump from CDs and fucking cassette tapes to, to digital, then and, the, the, the yeah. brand is going to die because I, I have to be able to train to compete somehow. Now, of course, I do own all my own masters and all the streams come to me and I don't have to cut anybody in. Thank you, Necro, for giving me all my masters. You know, I own everything. Necro owns everything. So a lot of people don't realize with the grind, independent artists that do well digitally are actually not struggling as much as you think that we might be struggling because we own all our own masters and, and, and we have huge catalogs. And yeah. if you're streaming, let's say you have 50 different songs, Necro songs or, or any, anybody's songs on a playlist and they're an independent artist, that means those songs are popping nonstop and we're getting 100% of the money for it. Necro writes, records, produces, promotes. Yeah. He owns all his beats. You know Dude, what I mean? that's what I, I mean. All our beats. I didn't know how much went into what you guys did. And, you know, just starting, like I said, talking to you guys, I'm like, holy shit, these guys are no fucking joke. Like, you guys are, you know, and again, looking from the outside in, you, you would think one thing, right? I mean, it's just what it is. As humans, we look at people and judge them. But then when we... I, you know, I get into it and really understand what you guys do. I'm like, yo, you motherfuckers are no joke. Well, like, you, you can, can see it's, it's one o'clock in the afternoon on a Wednesday. I ain't working a fucking nine to five job. So no. this is my, this is my job. So living off of your if brand, I don't, if I don't do my job. If I don't do my job, no money comes in. It's the same as anybody else's fucking job. You could be shoveling ditches in a cemetery. You're working your nine to five, whatever you're doing. My job is actually a little, sometimes <laughs> a little bit more challenging. It is. At two in the morning, I'm writing verses to be at the studio the next day because the baby might wake up and I get cock blocked. I can't write anymore because the baby's on my neck like a fucking barnacle. So, you know, 
I might still be able to write, but I might have to write barnacle into the rhyme. And, you know, you know I tarnish you with the barnacle, the barnacle, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's, and again, man, that's, I give you guys a lot of credit. And I, and that, just like she said, I don't think you guys get the credit you're supposed to. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's, I'm, I'm, I, my brother, he's five years older than me. And uh, I put him on Necro. He's 96. Yeah, 97, 97. Oh, um, my bad, my bad. Yeah, he's five years younger than you. Um, <laughs> so what happened was I put him on Necro and in, in like the 90s. Let's speak French, like Touche. <laughs> Polybou Francais? That's all I know. Yeah. Um, I know Touche. <laughs> they, um, we've been, so we both have been fans for like 20 million years, right? Mm -hmm. So when I told my brother, yo, I started talking to Hyde and Necro and like, it's been years now. It's just crazy because it's like Necro came out, the Tyrannosaurus came out, and then Mr. Hyde <laughs> came out. <laughs> yeah. Then they wrote the scriptures. Right. Then, right. then Jesus <laughs> came out of the closet. So <laughs> But just but just what I'm trying to say is that we were such big fans. Like honestly, you guys aren't in the top like ten of our music. I've been listening to your shit since for twenty oh, fucking you. years. Like yep. so when I like having dialogue with you guys it just changed everything and it it made the music that more much more important if, if that makes sense it I made it more of a thing for me like oh, damn oh, like, and one of the things is that's what i want the light to go on in fans heads right so like the, there might be casual fans right who hear maybe who, the biggest songs of ours they might hear necro who's your daddy or any drugs and be like oh he's a dope novelty artist that makes funny songs you know like you know, it's a funny song. I want to mm -hmm. show my friends I need drugs. But if you actually sit down and listen to the whole catalog, you're going to see, you know, it's going to open up a whole, it's going to open up Pandora's yeah. box and you're going to see all the fucking little intricacies and areas of hell that you didn't know about. You know, hell and the devil, but you right. might not know the temperature around the corner over here in hell. So that you're going to get all the intricacies right. of our music in our catalog. Like album tracks that we might have made a theme song or, or like a thematic or a fucking, um, uh, a topical, what do you call that? Um, a novelty track somewhere right, uh, right, on, right. on a track that might be really intuitive and really smart. Um, like I did a song called Bums with Necro where I personify myself as a homeless person. So all the rhymes would be what a New York bum would rap about if he was a rapper. And it's fucking crazy. And so then you're like, just well, talking I'll about your life. Right. I do a lot of tra <laughs> right. I do a lot <laughs> of tracks like that. So I have a song on If a Blues Can Kill It called Vampire, where I'm rapping from the perspective of, va of a vampire, and yeah. nobody's done that in hip hop, to my knowledge. So like, there's little you would never know those tracks. You might know well, that's the storytelling part of shit, and that's what I mean. Like, you have your regular rappers that just say shit, right? Right. Right. But well, then you I have say, we're we're in the Dragon's Lair studio. Shout out to the Dragon's Lair, Multiple Blast. I've been recording here since If It Bleeds When You Kill It, that we mentioned it. So since mm -hmm. my third solo album, all my stuff has been recorded here. Yeah. And I grew along with the studio. The studio has grown to be one of the dopest, you know, New York. And studios. every studio has that it's leather expensive. couch you're sitting on that's all cracked up and shit. That's like yep. a staple of studios. Oh, hell yeah. Hell like yeah. big time. I just had the to say that because. The couch you'll ever sit on. Right. Well, Even here in Houston, there's well, a. 200 there's pound a... Rottweilers have slept on this couch. So, you know, hey. it's broken in. <laughs> big time. Oh well, yeah, you know, so so you know the creative process for underground cutting at cut, cutting edge artists. We're not the type of dudes to grab any old beat and rap any old two verses on in, uh, and put any old chorus Correct. together. I actually structure my songs with movie samples and tie them in to what I'm rapping about and, and make a theme of the song. Just look at the movie. the the Bonnie and Hyde you you put out. Yeah, like that yeah. video alone and the whole structure of that was when I watched well, it. I'm like, out. yo, that shit was dope. Like it's not just some idea. bullshit. Listen, I'm so thankful now because when I first started uh, on Necro funded, funded and produced my whole album, put me in the studio. I didn't have to spend a dime. I mean, we, we you know, we had to recoup and all that stuff. But like, as far as uh, he put me in, he produced the whole album, he funded the whole album and distributed the album. Damn. And I'm very thankful. From then on, I was able to fund my own projects. I'm not hey. one of these rappers that somebody, yeah. I was gonna say, tell them what? about how you guys used to package your music and, and send them out. See, rappers don't oh, know about that do. shit today. No, I'm no, talking about the, the records, the CDs. Bro, there was a time I even fucking had the CD sent from the distributor broken up. The, the actual jewel case by itself and I put jewel cases together. Put them together, put yep. the art to in save there, to save a hundred dollars because I didn't have no, the money. That's, and that's what I, I mean, had like just enough to press the CDs up. 
huge we'll difference from Gina. the mainstream. How many times did I empty my savings account to go on tour to press merch? Like I have to have merch for this tour. I have no money yeah. in savings. Let me empty my savings account, five thousand dollars that was in there, and press up five thousand dollars worth of merch to go to Australia to make fifteen k. <laughs> you know, yeah, and then come home and gamble it on the Yankees. But, nah. but, but what I'm saying is, <laughs> I mean, they like, are the best team story, in the world. Right? Just. <laughs> They are. Thank you. <laughs> well, I mean, not until they win like this year. <laughs> when when opening day starts, they're not the best team until they win the World Series that year. Then they could be the best team for the whole off season. So Why it's all about winning the well, World Series, you know. So I okay. I don't feel like the best rapper until I have a brand new album out. So when a brand new album out, I, I'm I'm feeling good for about a week, and then I start to get inspired to do something new already. I'm already. Yeah, you guys put out massive album. amount of music. You know, I gotta I, say, not the best rap. I didn't mean to say the best rap in the world. The Yankees are the best team in the world. Yes. <laughs> but I, I, I'm gonna say I don't feel at peace with myself, you know, until the new album drops and the fans are loving it, and and that right. that's my mission, you know. And that and she has her creative process that she goes through, and it's very hard for her to be inspired sometimes with the baby, and she she still bartends at a really upper class spot now where she's yeah. making crazy money, but. It's still right. bartending, dealing with the public, dealing with shit where, you know. Let me borrow $20. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. I, I, I Believe me, I borrow $20. Off of <laughs> well, that's what's up, man. Like, I love. <laughs> Who do you think is paying for the studio session? <laughs> I got I to spend it on merch. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know what? I would have worn my, my uh, Hyde shirt, but I wore it the other day. It's dirty. So. Yeah, now it's dirty. It has, it has droppings from your beard on it. So listen, yeah. uh, it, has ginger ale, it has ginger ale droppings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not wrong with ginger ale. It's healthy for you. Yeah, it's okay if you have an upset stomach, but you're going to really upset your stomach if you keep drinking. Ginger hey, if you eat a, uh, a out, huge... The sugar will burn out the core <laughs> of your stomach. That's one thing about Hyde, man. He he is a a, a health nut. And oh, and I'm not. I don't just preach. I practice. No, 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 for real. I no, see, he is. He you'll is, call me eating no. salads, like. And he's, see, got, I'm he's, salads. he's got the most discipline ever. I mean, I'll be eating chocolate cake right next to him, and you'll you'll eat a salad. He, <sighs> see, I can't do that. He has he has the the best you know discipline, willpower, and everything. You walk into my thing, house. When, when we met, he's, he's, all over always my face. Been, he's always been sober for as long as I know him. And when I met him, I was into all sorts of drugs and drinking heavily. And basically, he told me he would never be with a drug addict. And that helped me clean up my act. And he kept me sober for years. He's, uh, she got the high, she first, got the high first, health. The first couple <laughs> years that I was in New York, I was, uh, you know, I, I was struggling with getting rid of my addictions uh, as well yeah. as trying to speak English and yeah. getting, getting work in New York with no papers. And it was just, uh, it, it was interesting. You went through like, it. He kept me in line. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. I was going through it physically and emotionally and he just, he didn't give up on me. So, you know, I don't knew cry he was on a, the podcast. I, right? I knew, I knew he was a keeper. <laughs> so, you know, I I, you. I, but I'm never going to share it. No, I, I, almost, I almost cried when you guys were talking about Kid John as the kid. She's very uh, emotional. Yeah, yeah. She, she'll be watching commercials like for Kleenex and she'll start crying. No, if there's like animal abuse or uh, oh, I'll cry. Right, the Sally Struthers I, I just, show. Oh, man. The Sally Struthers I, show. Yeah. Come on. It cannot, it cannot about, be about it. kids or, yeah. or animals or about people being discriminated. <laughs> it, it upsets me. Like, right, yeah. <laughs> The 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 the, the just, send the send a quarter a day to the animals like the, those commercials will come on and, yeah. and I, I, I I'll come in the I room and she'll be upset. she'll be with tissues and she'll, like what happened Did you watch a commercial again yeah. I told you, you commercials are a waste of time have you like, fed your ducks are on, yet what am I doing I'm doing push ups with commercials <laughs> uh -huh. hey that's yeah. what it is man and that's that's a strong relationship and yeah, that's yeah. why I wanted to have you guys in the show because this you know oh yo it's 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 deep we're happy to I be here. Can't, I can't say it any other way. It's some deep shit because uh, I grew up on it and I get to hear it and see it for what it is. And, you know, now the world get to hear it. And the aspects of making it, you know, like and, um, Hell you yeah. know, the creative processes and all those things. Now, hopefully the fans, hopefully we were able to dictate some of the um, the way it is, you know. But hopefully they can get the, the vibe of it from the podcast. I'm not sure. I know they're going to definitely get that. That hides insane. <laughs> but, I can only but imagine that, that, him twenty bro. years ago, bro. He can't even hang out with you guys. He beat everybody up. Well, I don't think people really. I, I mean, I don't. 
I don't. Do you think beat I'm, your own friends that's up? The funny thing. I don't believe I'm insane. I believe that everything I'm saying is the fucking God's honest truth, and that's how everybody everything should be. Like if I but go on tour with you guys, insane. am I gonna I, I get beat up? Or what? Would if I go on tour up? with you guys, like to go <laughs> hang out, are you guys gonna beat me up? No, no. We'll, we'll fucking uh, I don't know. We'll dress you up like smell this. Smell this. <laughs> I can do it. I'll be the Pillsbury <laughs> Doughboy, bro. Everybody, everybody gets abused on tour, including me. Well, we'd never do that to you because it wouldn't work because Elvis had hair. So <laughs> I love you too, Hyde. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, Holy so shit. I think we could wrap it up, right? Do you have any other questions for Kareen? Because she talks so much. <laughs> he's he's out of breath right now. <sighs> never out of breath. I do my cardio. <laughs> hey. Can you guys play some live music for me? Yeah. Really? Oh so. yeah. Oh fuck. Yeah, we'll really do some live. Should we get the we got we got the piano yes. right here? You're in the studio. Yo, do piano? that let's shit. See. Yo, let's do it. I'll do some live shit. Hold on. Just don't j- don't Hold fucking on. mosh pit and start kicking the piano over high. Can you see from there? Can you see? Yeah, I can see. Fuck it. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's that lot. Uh oh. Oh shit! Uh-oh. She got the uh oh. The fan, the fans know this wasn't so live. <laughs> Funky fresh face melt, y'all. Check it on Spotify. Yeah. Yo, 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 yo. The best get out of my way, I'm the most damaging plague After I'm dead fed, so be scattered in my brain For now, pulling pins out and ramming grenades If shit gets physical, I'm grabbing hammers and blades And while your man is clacking my axe, hand is chopping Leave your ass rotten, like Janice Joplin Drug up your frame just to pump your stomach And now you regurgitate, bet it was worth the wait Flirts and rape, I'm looking at curse your fate Use a little surge of hate, add to the murder rate Clog your arteries with the hardest disease To cure, draw raw, never pardon MCs. If I can play key, any time on the bleeds And my heart drops degrees at the barometers freeze Snatch your yama for keys, drive off high hills Pack your umbrella, case the sky spills Waking up in maggots as vulture grub Cause I'm breaking up you faggots like culture club Cage up in shackles for rocks and noose of my flow Got you loose like old prostitutes and I stroll With a couple of real hostile groups Playing the villain role like Tupac and Juice What? Yeah, that shit is dope uh, hey, listen, a little out of breath. I actually didn't do my cardio. <laughs> it's not easy without a hype man. Yeah, I'm going to go beat up the mailman after this. Sherry Rain, y'all. Sherry Rain, y'all. Barney and Hyde. Oh, switch it. Watch me ignite this shit like a fiend's pipe pit. I do this for thugs, leaving the righteous split. You'll turn into dashes at the sight of my blaster. Might be tight quick, but some of my bullets run faster. Bucking off shots, got you clutching your knot. Trying to plug up the holes, our blood is gushing a lot. Put it on my brass knuckles, hit you with the jab or two. I'm set to stab a dude, turn him into maggot food. Jack in the magazine, can I be done with it quick? Watch me empty out clips like a son of a bitch. No remorse in my heart, I've been rotten since birth. Before I finish the job, I'm kids a 
find the hurt. Hunting for a skirt, if she's beautiful drugger. If a man riff, I got the Louisville slugger. Can Griffey swing with an axe at your face? Little pieces of your skulls all over the place. Attacking shit, immaculate, never miss a target. Open up your mouth, son, I use my fist to target. Dead up for real, get up your shield. Cause when I set up to peel, you'll be wet as a seal. Your fleet might be deep, I'm rolling with worse dogs. Prone to burst slugs like Stallone in first blood. What? Yeah, King Boris. KB experiment, Sherry Rain, Mr. Hyde, go fuck yourself. Yeah. Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. Shout out to Necro. That's a Necro beat right there. Necro music, piano. Got a nine tails, notorious, glorious. She's definitely getting dick tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You guys are wild, bro. Yo, that was dope, man. I got to say that was dope. I never had anybody perform on the show. Oh, shit, uh, man. That's what's up. Is well, listen. Are you done with us? Can I go watch the Yankee game? Yeah, get the fuck out of here, all right? <laughs> hey, thanks for coming wait, on the wait, show. Wait, wait, hold on. How are you talking? Is that the, is that the way? Oh, word up. <laughs> I got the, oh, yeah, we, we, we're going to sponsor brands and shit. There you go. I'm going to take hip hop back. Hell you know yeah. My, my, my brother Hoya, rocking the mad bullshit. Mad bull. You know what I'm saying? Fucking, yeah. if you got problems, call Uncle Eugene. You just don't own bats. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the Eugene that's bat that's line? We handle shit around here. <laughs> we, we need the Eugene bat line. Hey, thanks for coming on the show, guys. I appreciate you. This shit is, was way better than I expected. That live performance, oh. yo. Wait, wait, wait. Let me put you on the spot. Was it better than CeCe Pettiston? Uh-oh. I, I don't think she, she didn't pause, sing live for me. You paused too long, CeCe. You get fucked up. When you pause too long. <laughs> no, no, she, never, she never went live on the show yet. Oh, okay. oh I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Which I just so I'm a, you guys I'm now I'm going to have to get her on. Homies. And I think it's funny because I used to rock CeCe Pettiston too. Yo. While, while, while her uncle was rocking Cinderella, I was rocking CeCe Pettiston. Hey, I'm going to send her this. That you said that you sung her finally song. And She's listen, love finally, it. it's happened. So, um, also, uh, if you have, yeah, what was I gonna say? You're gonna edit this? You're gonna edit some of this shit out? Because I know that we, hell we no, went longer, we went longer than it was. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play this whole shit. It's gonna be a seven hour podcast. Okay. It's gonna be like a, a it's not gonna podcast. be, it's gonna be like the Wu Tang double album, right? Like when Wu Tang has to release two, two albums, like double hell yeah, four right? CDs okay. in the damn case. A new revolutionary moment for the KB experiment. The first double disc tape that you don't have to fast forward through. Mr. Hyde, yeah. and Cherry Rain, Bonnie and Hyde. Go fuck yeah. yourself. Yeah. Yo. All right, guys. I love you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Boris, for having us. And for oh, having me on my nice. first podcast ever. Oh, yeah. Hey, that's it. Like, hey, you popped your cherry. You popped your cherry. You cherry. You just don't know hey. about You popped my cherry rain. That's funny. Sherry popped to Sherry. That's yeah, hilarious. That's it. You guys are fucking wild. Hey. All right. I love all you right. guys. Peace. Bye. Peace. All right. All right. Run it. Run it. I'm running. Run it.